All right, folks, this is my uh, Polar Flow website that shows all my workouts. You can see I work out quite a bit, except for this week. The week of Christmas is when I had the sciatica. I actually did work out um, that Saturday somewhat, but not as much as I normally do. Um, so the workouts that I did today, this is the fitness test, 16 minutes. This is my workout. Um, I forgot to shut the watch off. It's a little longer than normal. So in here I can go in and schedule my workouts that I'm going to do to my watch and then synchronize my watch and then when I go to do my workouts these workouts show up and I select which one I want to do and do it. So earlier today for like the Bowflex fitness test if I select it it will go in and show me like this is where you're doing your 50% uh, target, 80% target, that sort of thing, and then my cool down. So it shows that pretty good, but there's not a lot of intervals, so it's and it's kind of a weird workout. It shows my cardio load was low, my average heart rate, how many calories, that sort of thing. But if I go into the other workout that I just did, you'll see the intervals more clearly. So here is like the starting where I was talking. This is the first interval, the cool down, second interval, cool down, third interval, cool down, fourth interval, which is the one that I went way above outside of the target range, cool down, you know, so then this is where I forgot to shut the watch off. So basically it shows what my heart rate zones are, zone one, zone two, four, five, one, three, four, five, one, three, four, five. Um, heart rate zones that shows it over here the percentage that I did in each zone and uh, we'll get more into heart rate zones here in a minute so although this is for running it's pretty much the same heart rate zone 1 is 50%, 50 to 60 percent of your heart rate max your heart rate max is 220 minus your age again I want to stress that very easily you take 220 you subtract your age whatever that number is you should never e exceed it for long periods of time so for instance if you're 20 years old 20 minus 220 is 200 if you're working out you should never exceed 200 beats per minute while working out for an extended period of time that extended period of time is what is key. You can work out at that rate or even higher for small amounts of time, a minute or two tops, but you don't want to get in that zone and stay there for four or five or ten minutes straight because what's going to happen is you can actually cause yourself to go into a heart arrhythmia. I've actually done it. It's very popular with people that work out and really push their extremes. It's very scary. Um, it will require a hospital visit so don't do it um, basically what happens is when you get in that zone and work out for an extended period of time your heart tries to beat even faster because it doesn't think it's getting enough oxygen and it basically just starts fluttering on the heart rate heart rate zone 1 50 to 60 percent of heart rate max um, says here training at this intensity will boost your recovery and get you ready to train at higher heart rate zones so that's very light also very light and light is really good for burning calories um, if you're trying to lose weight heart rate zone one and two are really good places to be in uh, heart rate two feels light should be able to go for a long time um, this is the zone that improves your general endurance. Your body will get better at oxidizing, burning fat, and your muscle, muscular fitness will increase along with your capillary density. Um, heart rate 3, moderate, 70 to 80% of heart rate max. Uh, running in, or, or Working out in heart rate zone 3 is especially effective for improving the efficiency of blood circulation in the heart and skeletal muscles. This is a zone which that pesky lactic acid starts building up in your bloodstream. 
Training in this zone will make moderate efforts easier and improve your efficiency. So, you know, if you're trying to lose weight, you want to stay around heart rate zone 2 um, for long periods of time. If you're wanting to improve your performance and the amount of time you can work out hard, you'd want to stay in heart rate 3. Heart rate zone 4 is hard. Um, this is where you start to breathe hard. It's also where you start to work out aerobically. If you train at this intensity, you'll improve your speed endurance. Your body will get better at using carbohydrates for energy, and you'll be able to withstand higher levels of lactic acids in your blood for longer. Heart rate zone 5, which is 90 to 100% of heart rate max, is maximum. Heart rate zone 5 is your maximal effort. Your heart and blood and respiratory system will be working at their maximum capacity. Lactic acid will build up in your blood and after a few minutes you won't be able to continue at this intensity. If you're just starting out or have only been training for some time, you probably won't have to train at this intensity. If you're a professional athlete, look into incorporating interval training into your training plan for peak performance. Now that you know what these zones are, let's go back and look at where I was at. 26% of my workout was in zone 5. I work out a lot. I'm fine to work out in that zone for long periods of time. I also did 23% of my workout in zone 4. I did 20% in zone 3, 17% in zone 2. 14% in zone 1. So when I'm doing intervals, what I'm doing is I'm working out to not only reduce body fat, but I'm also working out to increase my endurance levels. So if something happens where I need to run for a long period of time, working out in zones 3, 4, and 5 are going to allow that to happen. You can see over here it has the zones listed almost immediately because I'm working out at a high resistance level. Almost immediately, I jump up on the first interval to zones 3 and 4. It drops down pretty much to the bottom of zone 4 where it stays for some time until I do that really hard workout where I went way past the target range where I hit zone 5. I recover to zone 4, back into 5, zone 4, 5, zone 4, 5, zone 4, 5, and then during my recovery, I went back down. So that kind of explains Polar's heart rate zones and interval training. Still back in the Polar Bowflex Flow website, I wanted to show you that um, how, how I created these um, workouts. So when I go into my favorites of the Polar Flow website, this shows the different workouts that I've created. I've got a stretching workout here um, that I try to do because I often forget to stretch after workouts, which is a very common problem. If you don't stretch, eventually your muscles will tighten up and could cause problems like sciatica to come back. Um, so I just recently added this one. It's about 40 minutes in length. It's got a bunch. If I just click on it, kind of show you here the different stretches that I'm doing for how long and um, pretty slick the way that works. Now in here I got a Bowflex fitness test. I've got my 5x5 squat, bench press, and row. Down here I got my 5x5 squat, overhead press, and deadlift. And then I've got several workouts set up for the Bowflex. Uh, 60 minute. 45 minute, 14 minute, 21 minute. So I just did the 14 minute was the one that I recorded. If I show you that, it's basically the 30 second warm up is where I try to get the Bowflex uh, time synchronized as close as possible to my watch, plus or minus a couple of seconds. Then this would be when you first turn on the Bowflex and it goes up to that high rate right off the bat. I don't know why Bowflex doesn't have a warm-up at the beginning, but basically you press start and you immediately go to hard. So that lasts for 25 seconds, rest for a minute 20 seconds. In here, these collars are the zone that I try to reach. So when I work out, my hard zones are zone 4 and 5, 
my rest are zones one, two, and three. Then it goes back to work, rest, and basically I've created the same number of intervals that is in the 14 minute workout on my watch, complete with a cool down at the end, and uh, that's how that works. So I can go in and edit this, and I don't really need to, but I'll kind of show you how it is. So this is my 30 second warm up where I'm trying to synchronize. This is my work. This is my rest, and I tell it to do it eight times, and then I do an additional cool down at the end. Um, so if I wanted to create another workout, I can just click add. Let's say I want to add the seven minute polar. The thing I need to know is I need to know how many zones are in that. And I want to know, you know, is my workout going to be for duration, which is time based, distance based, how many calories you burn, uh, how many intervals you're going to do, race and phased. So because polar is based on intervals, we would select interval. We would tell it our warm-up zone. We could go in and edit this. We could tell it how long we're going to work for, how long we're going to rest, and how many number of times, and then a cool down at the end. So I would basically go in and say this is the seven bow flex. Um, leave the date, the time. Just put some time in there. It don't matter. You can put notes. Uh, since this is low on time and intervals, work out at a higher resistance level and um, I don't know how many intervals in there, but I would change this to 30 seconds just like I did before. That gives me time to get my watch synchronized. 30 seconds. Done. Alright, so we know that the work on these are almost always, what is it, 20 or 25 seconds? So I change this to 20 seconds. Save it. Done. We know that the rest is always a minute and 20 seconds, so I'm going to change this to a minute. 20 seconds. Done. And we could kind of probably figure out. So that's a minute 40 seconds, and we got to get to 7. So it'd be 140, 280, which would actually be 320. You know, I, I know it's going to be more than four intervals. I just don't really know how many it is. But then we're going to do like a small two or three minute cool down at the end outside of the Bowflex cool down because their cool down, their last cool down minute and 20 seconds, not long enough. So this here tells me that my time is 10 minutes. If I subtract that three, we're pretty close. Maybe it is close to four intervals. So then I just save it. Now, if I wanted to add it to my favorites so that it's synchronized to my watch, I click Add to Favorites, then Save It. It's saying a date field required. We'll say I'm going to do this for the first time on the 31st. But I've added it to my favorites, so it will always be there once I synchronize my watch. So there's the 7 Bowflex one. Uh, I can drag this down so that it's with the other ones. It just makes it easier to find on my watch. Okay, so once that's done, if I wanted to do that workout tomorrow, it probably already added it on the 31st. Yeah, so it added it there. But let's say, so it's not on tomorrow. If I wanted to add that for tomorrow, I just go add, favorite target, seven bow flex. Now it's added here, and all I have to do is synchronize my watch and then do that workout. So that's kind of how the how I do the interval setups on my Polar watch and then schedule it for my training. Now this is just a demonstration. I'll probably go in and delete that. I might leave it just to see if it actually matches up. But that's how it's done.